Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Kenzik, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be reading some r slash entitled parents. But before we get into it, I did ask you guys yesterday if you would prefer 5 minute videos on the weekdays just so I can get something out to you guys. The plan is to record for as long as I can and if it's shorter, it's shorter, there's nothing I can do about it. It really is all depending on the day. Today I think I have enough time to do a normal video, but uh, yeah, we'll see. So enough talk, let's get straight into the first story. Entitled parent angry that I won't be her family IT guy at work. I work IT for a small company, I support about 25 people total, anything tech related owned by the company and I'm involved with it. I like my job, most of the folks working here are good people even though some of them are very difficult to train on computers. Entitled Parent is a middle aged woman who, as far as I can tell, gets paid more than I do for about 45 minutes of work a day that she stretches into a full 8 hour shift. She can't really even do that 45 minutes of work correctly most of the time and I've come to retrain her on the software we use several times a month. Entitled Parent also refuses to listen when I'm helping her with tech issues and has something new to complain at me about every week. I'm told she only got the job because her dad and the owner of the company are old drinking buddies. Well, as annoying as Entitled Parent is, I was able to mostly ignore her until the incident last week. I am in my office working on something when Entitled Parent comes in with a laptop, some cables, and an iPad. She sets them down on my desk and just looks at me without saying a word. Uh, what's all this? My son's laptop and my iPad are having trouble, can you fix them? Sorry Entitled Parent, I don't work on personal devices. If it isn't owned by the company, I don't work on it. You'll have to go to a shop or something. Oh come on, you fix this stuff all the time, I bet it takes you 5-10 to 10 minutes tops to get them running. Then you can get back to whatever else you want to fix. Pushing the items back toward Entitled Parent, sorry, it's not gonna happen. Turning several shades of purple and red at this point, what the heck is wrong with you? You sit around all day doing nothing and when you finally come out your office it's to fix things that you obviously screwed up because you're incompetent. Just fix the things so I can take them back home and use them again. I don't know why the owner even keeps you around, you're so useless. Yeah, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave my office so I can get back to work. I go back to working on things and Entitled Parent grabs her stuff and storms out slamming my door behind her. I get a call about 20 minutes later from the owner asking why Entitled Parent was demanding I be fired. She had told him that I had laughed in her face and refused to help her. She even said I threatened to never help her with IT problems at work again because I was mad she called me out for being lazy. I explained what actually happened and offered to send the owner a copy of the camera footage of the entire incident since there's a camera overlooking my entire office. Owner requested the footage so I sent it to him. I get in the next day and I realize EP isn't there. I ask around and apparently the owner called Entitled Parent into his office and spoke with her about the incident. She tried to double down on her lies when the owner showed her the footage including audio and caught her in the lie. He then offered to let her take some time off to cool her head before coming back to work, but that he'd expect her to make an apology for me for her behavior. This enraged Entitled Parent who everyone could hear even through closed doors and after some screaming about how an awful person I was, she stormed out of the owner's office, grabbed her things, and shouted, I quit, before leaving. So she's gone for good. She was so unwilling to own up to her own poor behavior and apologize to me that she threw away a cushy job, making way more money than she's likely to make anywhere else around here. What an idiot. On the plus side, without Entitled Parent here constantly complaining, I'm getting a bit more work done each day. I feel so bad for these people that have to deal with entitled parents. Honestly, why would you go and bother someone that's clearly working on someone at their job to fix something that you could have probably done if you know could do your job correctly? I mean, you are in the IT department, right? No, but you just wasted a perfect opportunity and an amazing job all for that. Congratulations. God, these stories just get more infuriating by the second. <laughs> Alright, on to the next story. Give my kids something dangerous because I'm basically your boss. This happened yesterday morning and I'm not sure whether to be annoyed that such parents exist or to laugh about it, maybe both. I'm in law enforcement in a medium sized city in the southern US so I'm used to interacting with many types of people. Most are nice, some aren't. Both my patrol area and the area in which I live are fairly suburban and middle to upper class so most of the people I come in contact with are respectful to others, especially those with jobs like mine. Entitled parents are always going to be a problem though. 
Yesterday morning, I finished a 12-hour shift and was ready to begin my days off. Having worked quite a bit of overtime in the last few weeks, shopping for food wasn't something I had time for, so my kitchen was almost empty. I had no choice but to stop for groceries on my way home. I did my shopping and got enough food for at least a few weeks, then made my way to the checkout lanes. Enter Entitled Parent and Entitled Child. By now, you all know what these stand for. As I'm standing in line, I feel something tugging at my duty belt, the belt that we wear with all our gear on it, and feel a small hand trying to shove mine away. Since I have a taser and a pistol, I was immediately on alert. My training taught me to always keep a hand near my pistol so that it's not easily unholstered by anyone but me. I look down to see a boy of about 5-6 to six years old trying his hardest to get the pistol out of my holster. Hey, no, don't touch that. It's not something a kid should ever touch. Very dangerous. I want to play with it. I can't let you do that. It's a real gun and not a toy. You could get hurt. But I want it. No, you can't even touch it. It's very dangerous. Mom! He screeches, finally paying attention. What are you doing to my boy? Ma'am, I'm just trying to tell him that he can't play with my pistol. I came off duty and it's obviously loaded and obviously not a toy. He just wants to see it. Then he can look at it while it's holstered. I will not let him touch it. What's your problem? He's just curious about it. He idolizes police officers and wants to be one. Ma'am, I would be happy to show him some of our less dangerous things I carry, but under no circumstance will I let him touch my pistol, taser, or OC spray. Those are not something a child should be in contact with. I can't believe you. I pay taxes and that pays your salary. I'm basically your boss. You need to do what I say. And she reaches for my duty belt. Me blocking her gently by grabbing her wrist. I don't take orders from you. I take orders from those in my chain of command. I also follow proper procedure and protocol. Part of that protocol is to handle any situation in which someone reaches for my gun as a hostile act. If you don't move to withdraw your hand from near my pistol, I will arrest you right here in front of your child and all of these customers. Customers. Do you understand me? Title parent scoffs and moves her hand back. What is your name and badge number? I am Officer 607 Delta and my badge number is... Well, I'm going to be calling about you and getting you in trouble for assaulting me and grabbing my hand like that. You should know how to act in the public. All my boy wanted to do was learn more about what the police carry with them and you ruined his chance to learn. That's inexcusable. He's a good boy. He wouldn't hurt anyone. I don't see why you couldn't just let him hold your gun. He wouldn't pull the trigger. He just wanted to see it. Ma'am, once again, I cannot allow a child to handle a weapon, especially mine. It's simply not a safe thing. He can look at it, but he can't touch it, even when it's holstered. I just want to see it and hold it. Then he starts running around and making pew pew and bang bang noises, further proving that he believed it was a toy. He's just a little boy. What harm can he do? Aside from shooting himself or other innocent shoppers, he wouldn't do that. I already told you he wouldn't do that. Ma'am, this conversation is over. If you feel like you need to report me, go ahead. I will be more than happy to discuss it with all of my supervisors, but I will not discuss it further with you. Have a good day and stay safe. I walked to another checkout lane and left her standing there, mouth agape. I was able to purchase all my items and was about to leave when the assistant manager pulled me aside and informed me that all the checkout lanes are under video surveillance and that the store manager was in the process of making a copy of the entire interaction just in case my superiors wanted hard evidence that the boy was reaching for my weapon and that I didn't assault the woman when she also reached for the weapon. I thanked her and told her to tell the manager to keep the copy in a safe place and went on my way. I love my job, but sometimes I hate it too. Since I know in the past that the authors of some of these stories have watched my videos, I just want to say, if you're watching this right now, thank you for your service. The job you do is pretty insane, and to have to do with entitled parents on top of it can, can kind of suck, and I, I really feel bad. I hope there's some repercussion for this lady because what she was doing was just way over the line. I mean, these kinds of people aren't out here for display. They're, you know, they have a job and a life too. Alright, so on a happier note, it's about 9 minutes into the video, so you know what time it is. Bonus story! Entitled parent tells me I'm a spoiled brat because I drive a Ferrari. Selling cars has many advantages, like saving $35,000 to buy a classic Ferrari. But owning any year or any model of Ferrari is expensive, but it's worth it for the experience. Especially when a little kid says, cool Ferrari. But that kid just happened to have a mean mother. I was taking my girlfriend on a date to Olive Garden and I decided to bring my pride and joy, my 1985 Ferrari Mondial QV. That I nicknamed Modena. 
So anyways, me and my girlfriend pull up in a 34-year-old loud bright red Ferrari. A kid walks up to me right after I get out of it. Cool Ferrari, said the boy. That's when an entitled mother walks up to get the son. She gives me and my girlfriend a mean look and says, You spoiled brats with your fancy cars. Did your rich daddy buy that for you? I took offense to that and said, No, I worked hard to buy my dream car. The entitled mom looks at me and says, Well, you're wearing a Ralph Lauren shirt and a pair of expensive shoes. So you must be rich. You don't work hard. I was wearing a polo shirt with a WV logo on it and a pair of Vans. I told her how I'm not rich and just a normal person. She responds with, a normal person doesn't drive a Ferrari. I tried explaining to her that I saved up a lot of money to buy my car. Me and my girlfriend walk away, grab the table and ate some dinner. EM, if you're watching this, I'm a normal person who worked hard for my dream car. Right, so that's about the end of the episode. Thank you so much for spending 10 minutes with me today. It honestly means the world. Thank you guys so much for being here. Anyways, I got nothing left to say. I will see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.